this is the this is the Mike Gundy story. Did anybody see what Feinbaum said about Mike Gundy? We talked about it on the show the other day. Did you guys see Mike Gundy off the rails talking about agents, players, and NIL? That's what I told the players. You can just, There's no negotiating now. Just, Portal's over. Right, All negotiations history. Now we're playing football. You can enjoy just coaching and playing football. Conference and a 12 team playoff, yeah. and everything being so different, mm -hmm. just the newness of it all. Yeah, and you know, the business side of what we do now is, is we have to have those conversations with them. You know, tell your agent to quit calling us and asking for more money. It's non-negotiable now. Get to start again in December. So now we're able to direct ourselves just at football. And that part is fun because there's been so much other stuff going on. It's been hard to really focus on football. I just don't understand that. And I, I know I said this the other day. I think it's one of the stupidest things he's ever said. N not my, I mean, it's not Only up there with, with DUIs and stuff. Yeah. But do you understand the message you are sending to guys like Ollie Gordon? Do you understand the message you are sending to players that might be in the portal? Because you can get on me for, for ripping Mike Gundy, and I do it on a regular basis. I think the guy is one of the biggest frauds uh, as in terms of resumes that, that we have in college football. The guy doesn't win at the highest level, yet he is lauded as a god. This is why he doesn't win at the highest level. Feinball made a great point. You're irrelevant without Oklahoma. Well, where have you heard that before? And I'm not a Feinbaum fan, to be sure. We just talked about this yesterday. Right. But when he agrees with me, I think he's the greatest college football pundit in the world. That's why we have Feinbaum. But I think he's actually got a point here. Oklahoma was Oklahoma State. Oklahoma leaving the conference, as I've said repeatedly, damages Oklahoma State. Because Oklahoma State's not a draw. You're not excited to watch Oklahoma State football. Stillwater is not a destination. So when you come out and you rip agents and you rip players over NIL, who are you, Dabo Sweeney? Seriously. But what's the difference with but Dabo? Dabo, Dabo least... doesn't say it out loud most of the time. Well, and Dabo can say that he's won a national championship. Why would you say this out loud? And again, I know that I am, you guys are probably tired of hearing me talk about Mike Gundy, but I will just continue to say, I don't understand why Mike Gundy talks so goddamn much. Yeah, I, I think he talks so much because there, there's not repercussion. There's not like, there's not going to be, nobody's going to say to Mike Gundy, you know, hey, like probably shouldn't be talking about you know, that you had a, had four beers at the bar a thousand times in your life and you were just luckier than Ollie Gordon. Or that, you know, that now at this time of the year, you know, we're just focused on football. That have your agents stop calling us, you know, negotiations start back up in December when the season's over. And maybe that's the most telling portion of what he said. Because theoretically, the season shouldn't be over in December for you. If you're if you're an elite squad, right? Like, like if you're competing at the highest level of college football, which Oklahoma state has access to, they just yeah. don't, uh, you would be competing well into January, obviously. So, so that's where I say, Hey, like not only is this a bad look from an NIL standpoint and obviously the portal, but it's also kind of telling me, Hey, this is how you view your season. Hey, it's August. You know, obviously we're, we're rolling into September here in the next 10 days or whatever. And, you know, season's over in December, so call me then. That's what I think, you know, it, it, you just, you don't always have to be red-ass Mike Gundy. Like, sometimes it's okay to say, like, yeah, like, he should have said something like, hey, like, you know what, like, we have these conversations and it's an ongoing process. Like, just give a coach speak answer. There's no reason to be so red-ass about it. Uh, I, yeah. But yeah. that's who he is. That's who he is. That's, that, is, that's he is. And I think it's part of why, to your point, it, he's like lauded as this god, this figure. But this QR code thing on the helmets, does anybody really think that's going to make a difference? Do you know how difficult it is? I guess you could freeze frame it. Do you know how difficult it is to, to pull a QR code off of a live event? 
Do you know the conversion rate and how low conversion rate on on QR codes that are not stagnant, like so on a sign sitting in a concourse? Those QR codes do well. I think this is it. This is a neat little toy. Putting a small QR code on the back of your players' helmets. I don't know. I don't. I I am probably too biased against. Mike Gundy, but this is more nonsense. And I, I, if you're the big 12, what does Oklahoma state represent to you? What, what is the importance of Oklahoma state football See, Now I think it's absolutely paramount that they win. I think you need them on that wall. You don't want them on the wall. You need them on that wall. Yes. <laughs> right. Like yes. you, you need Oklahoma state to not be good. You need them to be elite. Pick up your weapon and stand post. Yeah, you need them to be elite. Who are you, Tim Walls? Yeah. You need them to be elite. And if they're not, Texas Tech, Joey McGuire, we were just talking about it. You, you need them to be elite. But but what would what would tell us that they will be elite? That's Nothing. the thing. At neither institution should we believe that Oak, Oak State or, or Texas Tech are going to win the conference this year. I don't see it with Oklahoma State. And again, I know Okie Light fan gets all pissed off when I say it. You don't have a quarterback. You don't. And your very defense of, of your program is that you're in the conference game every year. You're in the conference championship game every year. You're competing for the conference championship every year. But what's the difference? And this is the Oklahoma angle coming back again. Right? You, you're, you've always been the underdog trying to take down the juggernaut in OU or Texas. That's been your role in the conference. But now that those two are gone, now it's like, hey, it's your turn to step up. There's a void. Who's going to fill it? Well, unfortunately, I don't believe it's going to be Stillwater and Gundy and his mullet. Stillwater. I, I think it's going to be Kyle Whittingham and the Utah Utes. And I, I, again, I'll keep saying it, and people questioned me the other day, but I don't think it's great for the Big 12 if Utah just comes in and wins the conference. That's not a great look. Like, no, it's not. I, I, you need, like you said, you, you it would be nice if, if you know, Oki Light or Tech or, hell, even K-State, Kansas, won the won the conference title. That'd be nice. Yeah, I, I don't know. I, I think it'll be really, it'll be really interesting to see how it all plays out in, in, Stillwater. I just, Mike Gundy's got to stop talking. The other thing I would add too, to that point right there, if you're going to talk, then you need to win. Like, because Feinbaum saying like, Hey, like, you know, who, why would you want to go and play for Mike Gundy? That's the exact point. Like if you're going to talk this much, like you got to be a head coach that wins at a really, really high level because then kids would want to go and play for you. It's the, the, the values out of proportion. You can't be a red ass with the media and not win national championships or be in the playoff regularly. Because if you're not going to be an IL portal guy and you're not going to be in the playoff regularly, why would someone want to come and play for you? Yeah. Uh, Sean Rollins says Jake gave Monty the suds. Yep. Yeah. It, you know, it's going to happen. Uh, big blue horses. FSU is a colonoscopy without anesthesia. Wow. <laughs> Oh. Overhyped, overindulged crybabies. They could go winless, and that still wouldn't be good enough. Go Gators. Well, there you go. Go Gators. See, at least you embrace the fact that you're a Gator fan. I can appreciate that. Sean Rollins says up uh, Paul Lipbalm. Don't disagree. You know, Coco Von Coconut. Uh, I want you guys to ease up on Michigan. They never cheat, never lie, never steal. Just ask Jim Harbaugh. I mean, I mean, obviously, who would cheating, do... lying, and then playing the victim? Uh, who would ever do that? Doesn't I, get any more red, white, you know, and blue than that. You know, um, I know another coach that does not win at the highest levels that is lauded as a great coach. Oh, do tell, please. Uh, San Diego State Glenn, Mike Gundy is like J.D. Vance answering Jake Tapper questions on CNN last night. That was awkward. Yeah. Did anybody see Pete Buttigieg last night joking about going on Fox? <laughs> <laughs> so, again, little old Monty over here. Did you? So, Pete Buttigieg routinely goes on Fox News and beats ass. Like, he is absolutely dominating them. He's like, hi, I'm Pete, Pete Buttigieg. You might recognize me from Fox News. <laughs> 
which was, I, okay. Uh, good morning, everyone. I think Miami could take FSU this year. The U got a talent upgrade. Hell yeah, they did. Uh, welcome to the nightmare. Gundy has some liquid courage during that interview. I just think the guy doesn't care because he doesn't have I to I don't care. think he cares at all. Like, he doesn't have to care. They're not going to do anything. That was a DUI joke, by the way, which is funny, not funny, but funny. Um, <laughs> Mike Smith, Jimbo sitting back with his millions and probably sends yearly thank you cards to a and right? <laughs> I think those deals are dead. I, I don't think we'll ever see – I. You'll never see a Jimbo Fisher type buyout. It's too expensive, and schools can't afford it anymore. Yeah, I mean the the, the rev sharing portion of the new model just makes it so you can't you can't buy coaches out the way you used to. And 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 the sad part is, I, when I when I first saw that conversation come mm. about earlier this week, mm -hmm. you know the program I'm thinking of right off the bat, and that's going to be Baylor with eight ball, right? Is is Baylor not not buying out Dave? because they are budgeting for rev sharing and if that's the case i understand it but but at some point you you whether it's baylor or anybody else at some point you have to be more competitive i don't disagree with that at all uh would not mind living that life yeah me either i'm sign me up sign me up uh maury alvarez gundy gets as much pushback in stool water as ryan uh smith gets in utah <laughs> <laughs> yeah, not a drop. That's exactly right. That's exactly right. Uh, Lopes fan Gabe, why stop at QR codes? Let's change the nameplates on unis to players' cash app handles. If it works for drunk co-eds at college game day broadcasts, it's good for players. Cashless. Yeah, I think you you were watching. I don't know. We're watching a revolution. And I know that sounds dramatic, and we're watching a revolution. Players, this is now a player's program. Who are you, Arizona? You, Seriously. oh, excuse me. Who are you? You, Arizona? Program. Uh, this is the, this a, a player's game now. And it never was that. The thumb has been lifted off by the old white guys that have billions. And you're not wrong. I mean, they're already doing it at, at, at Colorado, right? Their, their social media handles are on their jerseys now. And, yep. you know. It's fine. Uh, Mike Smith, West Virginia did not fire Neil Brown prior to last season because of the buyout. And trust me, again, I say, I can't remember where we were. I think we were in St. George or something or yeah, Las Vegas. St. George, yeah. And there was a lady in a West Virginia shirt, and she did not want to talk about Neil Brown. She did not want to talk about it. I mean, it was one of the greatest awkward moments of moonshine that we've ever had on this show. But I, I think it is. I think it is phenomenal. Uh, all right, hour number two of the Monty Show, as always, brought to you by our good friends uh, at Canyons Golf, Canyons Golf in Park City. Love our guys, can't wait. It's already, it is already August 22nd. Just, what, two months left in the in prime golf season. We are going into prime golf weather. You got to get up to Canyons Golf in Park City. I love it. I love playing there. I love watching the ball fly. Uh, was using the Mevo flight scope last night in the backyard, getting ready for a big weekend of golf. Bro, I hit a, I hit the best five iron I have ever hit last night. At 238 yards on a five iron for me is phenomenal. Like I'll take, I, I am hitting my long iron so well. I do wish that I had a, uh, a three and a four iron. Cause I think I would, as well as I am hitting my long irons last night, Sunday, I hit a pretty good five iron as well uh i hit a 220 something so yeah i love it and when you're up at canyons golf at park city mountain resort in park city just watching the ball fly is is something fantastic get to uh park city mountain resort it's it is an awesome experience go play one of the best rounds of golf you'll enjoy it it's beautiful wildlife on the course deers the deers routinely see things like moose, deer, fox, like it's, it's a beautiful environment. And then you go have a world-class dining experience, uh, in the park city mountain, uh, canyons village. Um, uh, it's awesome. 